Shalom and welcome to another episode of Apostles of GMS. We're here on location in New York City at the Metropolitan Museum. The word metropolitan literally means other city. And uh, just came from inside of the building and uh, saw some artifacts. Uh, we visited the Assyrian section. We visited the um, Renaissance section, and uh, I believe uh, what is it? the Byzantine section. And uh, pretty much, you will see. Uh, we'll do a slideshow, and we'll do a voiceover over certain uh, pictures that we took, and you know, pretty much give an explanation behind the picture. Uh, the reason why we do such tours like this is to bring out the information, and the museum contains a lot of information that pretty much parallels the scriptures, parallels the Bible. Uh, for instance, the Assyrian Empire, there's a lot of history in the Bible concerning the Assyrian uh, Empire. You had prophets like uh, Isaiah, all right? you had prophets like Ezekiel. When I say the Assyrian Empire, really the Assyrian Babylonian Empire, which dovetailed into the Babylonian Empire. Right, so it's all part of history, it's all part of prophecy, and uh, these, this is the reason why we do these tours, okay? Uh, you have a prop, uh, scripture you can bring up. Uh, this is Job 9 and 24. The earth is given into the hand of the wicked. He covered the faces of the judges thereof. Yeah, the wicked, according to the Bible, is the so-called white man. In the Bible, who is known as Esau, Edom. All right, that's their true biblical nationality. Esau, Edom, which you know today as so-called white people. They call themselves white because when you look that word up white, it means not intending to harm, it means pure and innocent. But if you know the history of this so-called white man, you'll know it's anything but. As a matter of fact, right here in America, America is what? Stolen land, stolen property. By who? By the so-called white man who came over here and pretty much stole the land, roughly uh, uh, speaking, stole the land from the so-called North American Indian who was already here, who's known as the tribe of Gad in the Bible, okay? That's right. So, Job 19. so he's the wicked, all right? And then when you get deeper into the scriptures, you find out that there's really three classes of people. There's the sons of the power, which are the Israelites, which is us, as you see the sign of the 12 tribes. Then you have the sons of man, which are all the other nations, the so-called Chinese, so-called Japanese, etc. Then you have the sons of the wicked, which the sons of the wicked is the so-called white man. How do you know? You know by his actions. You know by his uh, history. Just like Yahushua said, you'll know a tree by its fruits. Now, what are the fruits of the so-called white man? Rape, robbery, murder, lies. Like we just came from this uh, museum, there's a lot of lies in there. They got a statue of what's supposed to be Adam, and I believe that's in the Renaissance section. And they got Adam looking like a straight up so-called white boy with a, with a little penis. Yeah, butt, butt naked, butt white right. boy, no beard, curly hair, with a, with a little tiny ass leaf on his uh, so-called penis, which suggested that his penis was small. What this, what this double did was really make mockery of the, uh, our forefathers. Because Adam is one of our forefathers, right? And that was in the Renaissance section. And by the way, the reason why, when you look up the word Renaissance, I don't know if you spoke on it. No, I didn't. When you look up the word Renaissance, it, it's, a, it's a compound word. Read meaning um, back and Nissan meaning born. Be loosely translated meaning being born again. Which means that Esau at one time was in power. And Esau lost it, lost his power and he came back in power. So he was born again. Because they speak about the Messiah whom the world calls Jesus Christ as the first born from the dead, meaning he was born again, meaning he was, he, he was put to death and he was raised back up. So they referred to him being born again. He spoke to uh, 
one of Nicodemus, exactly. And he told Nicodemus and John the third chapter, he must be born again. And John uh, Nicodemus didn't understand what he was saying. He spoke over his head. And um, the Messiah kind of cursed him out, saying, look, you're supposed to be a doctor of the law, a master of the law, and so forth. And, you, and this is something simple. Because he said, do you mean I have to go back in my mother's womb? You know, come out of the come out of my, my mother once again he said no you got to be born again basically through the spirit yeah. now Yahweh Shai was literally born again because he was put to death and he was raised back up as uh, uh, another example was Lazarus Lazarus was dead then he was born again he was made anew alright so when this white man was brought down give me Revelation 20 when this man was brought down the time that he was brought, that he was uh, brought down, was during the uh, when the Roman Empire was going down. The Roman Empire um, was transferred from the so-called white man, Quadi, the Edomites, to Israel. Yeah, the pagan to the holy. But from the pagan to the holy. Right. And the holy wasn't so holy. Right. No, it because wasn't. when Constantine the Great came into power, he. He, he brought that pagan bullshit with him, but, 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 he, but he added uh, script, uh, characters from the scriptures, or uh, our forefathers from the scriptures, and um, he kind of blended that with, the, with those pagan beliefs. That's why, um, that's why the church today, they, they, they call it Sabbath Sunday, they, they worship, uh, uh, they go to worship on Sundays, which goes back to the sun god, which is pagan. So there was a pit. Go ahead, go ahead. No, what I was going to say was what Constantine uh, uh, worshipped. Yeah. To, to back you up, he worshipped the sun. That's why they worship our sun day. Exactly. So now, during the time of Constantine, and the reason why I thought about, I thought about coming down here doing another, uh, uh, another uh, show on this museum, because we did one back in, way back in 2009. If you can find it, if you go to YouTube, and I believe if you put in GMS at the Met, if you go to, you'll, I think you'll see part two. Yeah, yeah. And I think the whole thing is on our daily motion, because we had it on daily motion, and it was put up on uh, YouTube, and that, that site was taken down. Or whatever. But any, anyway, we did a thing on that, and uh, so we hadn't been here in a while. But like I said, what, what made me want to come down here and do another show on this subject is, um, I forget the guy's name, but he was on Sarnetta. And this was maybe maybe about a month ago, three weeks ago. He's a Moor, I forget his name. And he was he spoke about Constantine. And he said, he said Constantine should get a foot up in his ass. And um, what I picked up from that was, You'll see, you'll see the video, it'll, it'll, it'll come up on the screen. He figured, he was talking about the Moors, because he's a Moor, and he was saying our enemy was, uh, one, of, one of our enemies, or one of the Moors' enemies was Constantine. And he spoke about Constantine as if he was a so-called white man, an Edomite, so you can understand. So, basically, we're going to show you that the people of the so-called Byzantine Empire Constantine, the, the, the line, his, his lineage, and so forth, those people of the so-called Christian Empire, if you will, the Byzantine Empire, were all so-called um, black people. And when you go up in this museum here, the Met, the first um, section that we went to was the so-called Byzantine, I guess it's called the Byzantine section, and the, the first uh, image that you're going to see, or you're looking at right now, is a woman, and it says something about she from she goes back to the Byzantine Empire. Oh yeah, she's a member of the elite. She's a member of the elite of the Byzantine yeah. Empire. Yeah. And if you notice, there was two shots: of, of, of face, a of, of front shot and a side shot, and you can see that her nose was chiseled off. Right. There's a reason why her nose was chiseled off, because she had her she had the features of a black woman. Her nose had that 
black feature, if you will. So what Esau, Esau knows the truth, because how can you tell a lie unless you know the truth? So when they um put these exhibits up, these different, different uh, busts, yes, busts and statues and uh, frescoes and mosaics and icons, the ones that obviously look had black features, they would they would cut off uh, the nose. Like there's a there's a uh, a statue of James the Greater, right. and you can see they damn near cut his whole face off, man. Right, right. Then right next to it, they did a recreation of what James looked like, and they made him they they made, they put a gave him a pointy ass nose, made him look crackified, right. so you can understand. Notice that nose wasn't chiseled off. That, that nose off. wasn't chiseled off. I wonder right? why. So the majority of people that go come up in here normally Edomites and Taurus from uh, other other countries, of course. And then you got the black woman. You want to find out what a black woman is doing? She's down here, but she's with her, her white buddy. Oh, yeah. They sneak down here, okay? Oh, yeah. That's what they do. Yeah. Right, go ahead. This I is Job 13 and 4. But you are forgers of lies. Yeah, like a good example of that is when you go, uh, come to this uh, <laughs> Metropolitan Museum, you will see a, 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 an example of this man being a forger of lies. Like I mentioned about that so-called statue of Adam, which they got Adam looking like a straight-up so-called white boy. No, they got him right? looking like a straight-up faggot. And a straight-up homosexual with a, with, like I said, with a small penis, all right? That's that's an example of a forger of, of lies, or a forger of a lie. Because right in the Bible, it speaks about Adam, and it tells you that Adam was made from the dust of the ground. Now, what color is the dust of the ground? The deep, dark, rich soil. Well, matter of fact, go to the scripture. Go to the fact, scripture. Genesis 2. Right, we're going to go to the scripture. The color is deep, dark brown. Okay? That's anybody that grows, anybody that's into horticulture, okay, that grows plants, that grows flowers, whatever, grows out of the soil. What kind of soil are they looking for? They're looking for the deep, dark, rich soil. Which, what color would it be? It would happen to be very dark brown. So that's where we came out of. We as a so-called human species, we came out of the deep dark soil, the deep dark uh, brown, okay? And that is the color of brown, which is very dark. So that was Adam. Was not Adam the first uh, created out of, out of the ground? So what color would he be by uh, extrapolation, by using common sense? He would be very dark brown. But that's not what you see at this museum. You see a, you see a straight up white boy, so-called white boy. Okay, which is a, for, a forge of life. And mind you, life. that was in the Renaissance section, the Byzantine section. Yeah, the rebirth. They they actually showed that these statues and these uh, mosaics and these uh, busts of actually black people whose faces were altered. In other words, they they chipped, they uh, chiseled off the nose. And uh, we we like a, like another reason why we do this. We, we do this particular show too. And so, when you get a chance, you come down here. And by the way, when you go to pay, you don't got to pay the full price. You can give them a nickel, and they get, they'll let you in. You know, with a suggested retail. Yeah. What is it, fifty dollars or something like that? Thirty-five dollars. Um, we'll come in. It'll be as three of us. We gave we gave the woman three dollars. She gave us the tickets. And we went right in. Right. That's right. Now, when you go in there, you go to uh, you go straight on through. On your right hand side is the Egyptian section. So if you one of them comedic Negroes, you can go right over there. Man, you can stay over there, right? Or you can go straight where the, where the stairs, the great stairs are, where you have the wall of benefactors. On your right, on your right hand side, and on your left hand side of, the, of those great uh, that staircase, you have the Byzantine section. And just look at them images, man. And see, you you have Edomites go up in there looking at the images, not realizing that those were black people. Because it's obvious that they took the, you know, why they took the nose off. The same thing goes for you, Jake. You Israelites out there. When you go up in there, you don't notice it because you don't know how to decipher it. The Most High, how Basham Yahweh Shai, used us, the apostles of GMS, used us to decipher these things. That's 
So that now when you go down there and pay your dollar or your nickel, you know you know what's what. And you know the difference between you know the difference you know the difference between uh dollar store glasses. You know the difference between the Renaissance art, the Byzantine art, you you would know and understand that the Byz the people of the so-called Byzantine Empire are dark skinned or black people, so you can understand. They were the same people as the Morks. There was a movie that came out. What year did that come out, El Cid? Had to be in the late 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 fifties, early sixties. It was called uh, starring Charlton Heston, which, by the way, he played a so-called black man, an Israelite from Spain. Uh, his the, the character's name was uh, Rodrigo de Vava, and um, he befriended a Moor, which they had a guy that looked like an Arab. It was really a black guy. Sidney Poitier should have played uh, the he could have well he could have played uh, either role. And Harry Belafonte could have played the Arab or the Moor. And they tell you how Christians and Moors came together. All right? And most of the Christians at that time didn't like that because, because of the fact that he, he befriended uh, a Moor. Because they were fighting against each other. They were, just, they were no, nothing but Israelites that, that left out of Israel. That went up into Asia Minor. That's why Paul had journeys up to Asia Minor. Because you had Israelites all up in...